Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the biggest danger to a local game store that carries Magic the Gathering and my store will not carry boxes. It will not carry that many singles. It'll just be the singles that I want to carry, which are the singles I like collecting. However, the biggest danger to stores that do carry boxes is Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime has replaced a lot of small companies and small businesses that sell because on Amazon, things are very cheap. I know a lot of people talk about Puka Trade, they talk about TCG Direct, and all these very magic-based magic -based, uh, websites. What if I told you that probably the majority of Magic players have never been to a GP. They've never been to a Friday Night Magic. They don't really care about competitive Magic. They just like playing Magic at the kitchen table or in casual players and especially younger players. I don't see that many younger players at my Friday Night Magic or on Saturday. It's not apparent. So a younger player who needs their parents to take them to the event their parents are probably not going to be like, okay, I'm going to leave my child with these adults playing a card game in this store, which is maybe very cramped, very smelly, um, unless that adult is also a Magic player. So that is the key difference here, was when I grew up, we had a Magic Gathering store and mall next to JCPenney's, uh, Exton Mall, and it was a really cool store. And people dropped off their kids all the time for like pretty much daycare right you play magic and everyone's learning playing magic and there's the cool store owner or it's a store i guess it's not owner because wizard of the coast owns it but the store manager and he teaches the play kids how to play and everyone's happy uh, i remember a store uh near the flower shop that closed and that they did it for pokemon a lot where you just drop your kids and it's kind of like a daycare you pay ten dollars and for the next four hours the kids just play pokemon with each other and it's a great there's free pizza and prizes and uh, this was just a local store it was completely full that no longer exists uh, we don't live in a society that can do that anymore where uh i my, my gut feeling tells me that friday until midnight i mean you if you have a 10 year old a five year old a six year old, that's not the idea or that's not the ideal time to be dropping off your kids that's why pokemon league i think is in the daytime right it's in the daytime and it's reasonable and but that's a different demographic so Amazon Prime scares me because how easy it is and how good their customer service is their customer service is a plus uh, anytime that you have a missed delivery or something, you just chat the dude, j dude chats you back, and you're good to go. Uh, at the very core elements, um, the very core of why magic is what it is today and why a Target, a Walmart, a major is allowed to carry this specialty product is due to the fact of the casual players are going. So if we truly... We read what Mark Rosewater, the face of R&D, research and development. So if anyone has data, it would be him. If we really went from 21 to 12, that's really bad. If we went from 12 to 12 to 12, that's still very bad. That means it's not growing. And if it's not growing, it's you're going to be Hearthstone. Uh, I read a comment saying that Hearthstone from 2014 on, Hearthstone probably took a big chunk of magic. No, I probably I agree with that because there's Hearthstone people. I mean, they took Brian Kibler, the most famous person in Magic the Gathering right, at the time in 2014. They took Brian Kibler. You know, he makes a Hearthstone video and he gets 200,000 views within a day, right? And it's just him playing Hearthstone because it's actually playable. He has more views than Tolarian Community College. He has more views and he's not even the biggest Hearthstoner. Do you know Hearthstoners? I was watching uh, Disguised Toast. Uh, he lives in a gaming house now. They have enough money from streaming that they can have a full-time job and hang out with other streamers who do like League of Legends and other stuff. That's insane. That is really insane. And I'm very proud of where the YouTube community has gone. Like, I think a lot of people think that we're competitive. I'm not competitive on the YouTube space. 
I don't really care. I, I really don't care because I make my money doing something else. I make, I have employees. I have many employees, right? I have other responsibilities. I have payroll responsibilities. Fighting against other YouTubers is not productive in any sense because it's a waste of my time. Uh, interacting with other YouTubers is also largely a waste of my time. And I'll just put it out there because it goes in reverse, right? That's, it's both sides of it. So I think that my perspective is very different, but I'm very proud of where the community has gone. It's gone from pretty much, Tolarian makes six figures. There's no doubt that he makes six figures uh, a year, which is a fantastic, I mean, the fact that he could quit his job to do YouTubing full time. That's something that I'm very proud of that this community was able to support him that way. Uh, Christine Sprankles is a full time cosplayer and now she's heavily promoted by Wizard of Coast, which I think is a positive. HQ would probably disagree about it, but I think it's positive because it's the direction. I like cosplayers, cosplayers in league. I mean, if we got cosplayers in league and even Hearthstone, even Cardfight Vanguard has cosplayers like you might not know this but in japan there's two very famous females who are cosplayers in card fight vanguard and if they can have it why can't we right like it doesn't make any sense because we have a bigger supposedly player group now i will get into the nitty-gritty of like what mark roachwater is actually saying about the player base and how we lost all these quote female players but I, first of all, I, I think that number was inflated. I think he inflated a number, to be, uh, if I were to be honest. Amazon Prime would scare the crap out of me if I was a local game store because you cannot be Amazon. Amazon is a behemoth, and it's coming for you. So right now is not the time to sign. Uh, from the very beginning, and I, I didn't change my view. I always told you I, lear I was learning about the WPN system and it never made sense to me. I asked many t store owners who were trying to sell me their inventory, which doesn't make, they were selling me inventory. It's like that video when I made the store that goes bankrupt and still trying to sell boxes for 85. Why would I buy your box for 85? I can buy any standard box for under 80 on Dave and Adams without discount. When I stack my discounts, it's under 75. We're free shipping and free stuff. Like why would I buy your stuff in a pallet and you know, a all-encompassing when I can get it cheaper from a, another online vendor that gives me better quality than you. It doesn't make any sense. So these stores are stuck in this mentality where because they bought the box of 78, they cannot eat a loss and therefore they eat a bigger loss down the road because they don't have cash flow to buy the new product that's hot. Cash flow is a huge issue in these stores. It's the number one issue. And Amazon Prime does not have a cash flow issue. They can buy, if this does well, guess how much of the mass 25th anniversary set they're gonna buy? A lot. They can stock as much as they want. It's insane. You cannot compete against Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime is, a, as a, any small business, it would scare the crap out of me if Amazon Prime went into my space and wanted to compete directly with me. So Blue Apron had a IPO. Blue Apron is this service that sends you food to cook. It has an IPO. The IPO launched at I think $1.83 billion. Right now Blue Apron is around 600 million, maybe less when you hear this recording. You know what happened? Amazon happened. Amazon was like, yeah, you know, I like Blue Apron and we're gonna do exactly what you do and we're gonna make it cheaper and easier for our customers. And we already have a customer base. Buy Blue Apron. That's what they're gonna do local game stores. The writing is on the wall. I'm not scared of Walmart. I'm not scared of Target. I'm not scared of Walgreens. That wouldn't scare me as a store owner who's buying boxes in the WPN um, WPN, it would upset me greatly and affect my sales drastically, but it wouldn't scare me because I could still go in business. I could still be in business. Amazon Prime, should they be able to sell a, a box at 143 with all the discounts they offer, all the coupons, all the, the 5%. If you have an Amazon credit card, they give you 5% back on top of this. So this is not even the cheapest price you can get it at. And you can stack multiple rewards. Like 
the stacking of coupons, if you understand how it works with like Dave and Adams or Amazon Prime, like you just save so much money. I use this app called like Honey. I think it's called Honey and it finds all the coupons for me and then applies them one by one until like it has a perfect combination of coupons. Like it finds all the coupons on the web and then it applies them just together in, in all these different combinations. And then, but it's real fast. And then I, I load it and then it's like, oh, you save 25%. Oh, cool. Economy Masters, $5 a pack. All right, check out. Anyway. That's it. Bye, guys.